To wrap up our conversation about linear orders, we're going to consider the case when we have some repetition. Okay, here's the example. In how many ways can we arrange these bugs? Here we have five that are red, three that are blue, and two that are green. The naive answer would be to say that, well, we have a total number of five plus three plus two equals 10 bugs, uh, bugs, um, which would say that there are 10 factorial orders. And just to remind you, 10 factorial, this is um, about three and a half million, um, specifically 3,628,800. Um, that would be a lot of ways. The problem with doing this is that that's not actually accurate, right? Because that would assume that these two bugs are different. And when we switch these bugs like this, we haven't changed the order. So if we were to throw these bugs in a line and just sort of line them up, like, and here's a possible linear order for these bugs, this linear order and this linear order are the same. So I can think about what I could do is I could approximate what we have and sort of number my bugs. So there's bug one, there's bug two, here's bug three. I'm just numbering the red bugs for right now. Here's bug four and here's bug five. So if I just think about numbering the red bugs, right? And I think about mapping those guys to numbers, then I can think about what have I overcounted by? right? I've overcounted by the number of ways to arrange those five numbers. So my overcount for the red bugs is five factorial. It's because I can do any permutation of these five bugs, rearrange any of those red bugs, and I still get the same linear order. And similarly, I could take the blue bugs and I can do any rearrangement of these three positions. So I've overcounted for blue um, is three factorial and for green I've overcounted by two factorial. So if I count this up in total, what's my overcount? It's the product of all of these because I've overcounted the red and the blue and the green. So the total number of bugs that I'm going to get is 10 factorial divided by my overcount of five for the red three for the blue, and two for the green. And when I work out what this is, this is gonna be 2,520 ways. So you can see that it makes a huge difference. Instead of three and a half million, we're only looking at about two and a half thousand. So it's important not to overcount things. So when there is repetition, we wanna take that into account. And the general theorem that we have to go along with this is here, if we take n objects, and we have objects of different types. Here, I had A1 is five, A2 is three, and A3 is green. Maybe that's worth writing down. So for the example, I had A1 was five for the red bugs. We did A2 equals three for the blue bugs. And A3 was two for the green bugs. And in this case, N, was the total number of bugs, which was 10. And so this is the formula that we get in general. And this is an important one to keep in mind whenever you're counting things where there are multiple ones of the same type. And you can do a sanity check on this example. If we take all of the A1s to be one, that means all of our objects are different. They're different types. Then what we get is just a bunch of ones on the bottom taken as a product, so we just get n factorial. And another thing to ask yourself, just to sort of check your understanding, is what happens if one of these AIs is equal to zero? So think about that and see if the formula still works in that case or if there's some adjustment that you have to make.